is Bailey. I'm an athletic trainer and orthopedic technologist at the University of Utah Orthopedic Center. Today we are going to show you how to do a short arm cast. Uh, here are our supplies that are needed. Uh, we like to use uh, one of these chucks just to keep things clean since this is a messy uh, kind of a procedure. Uh, got a set of gloves, a uh, bunch of different scissors. Uh, it is highly recommended that you have specific casting scissors because this the casting tape does tend to screw these things up. Uh, two rolls of casting tape, two rolls of padding, and then the stockinette for the arm as well as the thumb. And we got some uh, water here as well to help uh, with molding. So first thing I'm going to do is measure. Uh, typically go from, so when I'm measuring the stockinette, I'm typically measuring from my elbow to the tip of my fingers. That way I know it's going to be pretty long. Um, so I'm going about the tip of his fingers, making sure I got enough here. Important thing to know is once you put this on a, a patient's arm, the, with the forearm being a little bit wider, it's going to stretch this way, which means this is going to stretch this way. So just be sure that you are uh, cutting a long enough length. And the first thing I'm going to do is make a little slit right where the thumb is going to go. All right, you can put your arm up like you are going to arm wrestle me. Just making sure that the stockinette is nice and smooth, no wrinkles. With the thumb piece, I'm going to make a slit about halfway up along the edge, and I'm going to cape it right over the thumb and down the wrist. That cape is going to actually help it hold it in place once I cast uh, the arm in a few minutes here. Cast padding. I tend to start at the wrist so I can anchor it down. And I'm just laying this out with about a 50% coverage. So if here's the, the tape or the, the padding, I'm covering it by 50%. That will guarantee that I'm getting two layers of cast padding everywhere that will be underneath the cast. I want to go, again, two layers at the very end, and then just working my way back down the arm. The padding will be going, will be uh, laid down further than where the cast is going to go. General rule of thumb is we want the cast to end about two finger widths away from the antecubital fossa here. And this is when the arm is extended. If you do it up like this and I measure, I'm going to be off. All right. I like to use two sets of gloves. If anyone in healthcare knows, I take off my one set, I want to put my other set on. I'm sweating underneath, I and mean, you can't get that next set on, so the two sets will just make it easier later on. So do two layers of the cast tape and get it wet. Again, I'm going to start right at the base of the wrist, and again, just laying it down. I'm not pulling tight at all, and just like the padding, I'm 50% coverage. I'm going to go just behind the MCP joint. I'm going to go down right below the uh, the MCPs of the uh, of the fifth digit here. And as I come up, I want to make a cut so that I can go around the thumb. Same rule as before, I want two layers. I put a little twist in there to 
keep some of these strings from bothering the patient later on once they harden. Then when I come back around, I want to catch these wings. And then I want to make sure they're in a good position, which is just slightly into extension. And again, just working my way down, 50% coverage until I get to that two fingers away from that elbow crease. And again, two layers. Get the hands wet a little bit. Now I'm going to form it and get everything to stick, smooth it out. You leave it alone. Rule of thumb with forming is never use your fingers like this because this will cause ridges, which the patient will feel and it will be uncomfortable. And I'm going to use my Phenar Eminence right into the palm. Put a little pressure front and back of the hand to form the cast. I'm going to hold this typically for a patient. I'll hold it for about 60 seconds to make sure that this forms against his skin. And then I'll do the same thing around the wrist. Again, just slight pressure so that I'm only holding the cast material up against his skin. I'm not pushing in. Again, about 60 seconds there. And we'll go to round two. Fold over all the padding to give a good buffer. layer of the cast tape will be exactly like we did with the first. The only difference is we're not coming all the way to the end. We're going to end it no more than a, around on average about a quarter inch away from the end of the first layer. So starting at the base of the wrist again, 50% coverage. Around that thumb, leaving that space here to give a little buffer. Same thing at the bottom, giving a little buffer at the end. This will just allow comfort for the patient as he would bend, be bending the arm or making a fist in the hand so that he's not hitting the cast tape. Again, just getting some water. So the cast is already formed from the previous layer. This layer, we just want to make sure everything is nice and smooth and to be sure that there's no little string sticking up that might be able to catch clothes or whatnot. That is how you do a short arm cast. <laughs>